uh, Degas, great French painter, he said that the, the muses, they never talk to each other, but they dance together. And uh, an example of a painter who was much more in tune with the body and music was, I, th I think, Jackson Pollock is a fair example where it's performance art, where there's a dance and there's an element of play and personal expression that starts with the body first and with each movement and expression through the body having wet paint you know <laughs> attached attached to the end of his hand it would fly off and and make a mark and so instead of uh you know a, a more typical documentation of dance like like for instance uh, a cinematic portrayal or something like that you get an entirely different document of uh of a human being and their time on this planet i had a phase where i was really into the Viennese actionists. I don't know if you remember the uh, Kurt Krenn film I showed you. I forget who was the actual artist, but he just like lathered himself in paint and like crawled around a room and smeared it across the place. How how the art turned out is interesting and it's cool, but I love the fact that it was caught on film and the fact that the director is like, has as much movement in the camera and in just like overexposing the film. And that's as much art as what the art object ended up being. Oh, I think that there's merit to both. I think in, um, I think that there's merit to a film adaptation. I think there's merit to a painting because the the advantage of a painting is that it's enigmatic. You don't see how it got there, but you know that it got there somehow. And if um, if there's an inherent depth to it, it it has a subtle thing because the the film. If, 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 say, you film Jackson Pollock doing it and there was a little short documentary or, or some document of the performance, if you sat down and you watched a film, there would be an immediate understanding of what it is. There would be, um, there would be a shorter journey to satisfaction, and you could watch that numerous times and get something great out of it. But there's something about having a painting and about having the mystery of it and taking the time to contemplate it because it takes you on a completely different journey that um, because you don't have the full set of facts, the circumstances, you end up putting more of yourself into that discovery. And there's something transcendent with there. Film is like lo is lovely, it's wonderful. But it's, um, it's, uh, it's interesting when, when film is a series of images, and to me it's incredibly compelling when someone can figure out everything they want to say and say it with just one. I think then that comes down to, I mean, I always support a film explanation of things, but not necessarily an explanation. The film should be, like in that case, almost as abstract as the art piece itself. It should be a continuation of the art piece if you were to do a film on the art piece. Like, it shouldn't give away everything about why it is there. It just depends how you shoot it. This is why I keep coming back to Kurt Krenn. The art was in the action, and he saw a way to translate that action onto film in a way that's not explaining it, it's actually intensifying it through the use of time. I think that's the smarter way to do it, and I think that uh, as far as analyzing film, I'm very connected to Robert Brisson and his notes on the cinematographer, and the gist being that uh, Brisson damned or, you know, at the very least criticized just about all the cinema that was coming out, and I stand by him in the sense that, well, with cinema, quite simply, you're presented a series of images and a series of sounds, and Brisson, who spent most of his life as a painter, and that was his primary career, and film was something else that he did um, later in life, and his idea is that with cinema, you need to say the idea imagetically. It needs to be in the composition, it needs to be a series of carefully constructed photographs that communicate every idea so that a person doesn't understand it intellectually or, or um, doesn't understand it su superficially. Instead, they experience it. And you can come up with a series of very, very simple, but every photograph is deliberate and is beautiful and is worthy of uh, contemplation. Brisson was very. Brisson had a lot of really crazy, interesting uh, opinions, but he was pretty against using music and film. 
He thought that sound should be used very sparingly as a counterpoint to the image. It's a wonderful way to analyze film and, and uh, analyze cinema because uh, under Brisson's terms, most cinema is completely inept because um, <laughs> the quote that I, I attributed to Degas, um, Brisson also attributed to him as well, that exact same quote when talking about his philosophy on cinema. He thought that the muses, they don't talk to each other, but sometimes they dance together. And what he meant is that cinema cannot be theater. Theater is its own art form, and it's a brilliant, beautiful art form. And what makes theater distinct is that theater, it, it starts from the internal and it becomes external. You take actors who read a script, who interpret it, who understand it deeply, and they can find through their own experience and through observation the truths in it. And they take what's in their psyche and they project it outwardly. And Brisson believed that cinema had to be the exact opposite. You start with the external because it starts with the medium, it starts with the form. And you have photography, which is, which is um, at some level a capture of light and a capture of the physical. And through that, through careful compositions, careful ideation, you pull people inward. And it's a different movement from theater. And I think that it's a, it's a movement that's very little understood, but when someone does have an understanding and is able to do something transcendent with it, it the results speak for themselves. It is sublime. Yeah. I like that as a like study of the concept of what a film fundamentally is. However, I feel that's like musicians fundamentally refusing to use visuals in their live shows. It's like you're wasting potential. There's so much more to a medium than these simple rules hold. Like, if you're going to listen to music, yeah, we're going to listen to music. But if you add visuals, that ups the experience tremendously. The more things you can add to a person, the better. At the core, it should be that as the case. However, I mean, as I'm not I'm sure we're not in disagreement. Music, like, ups an experience well, tremendously. We, we might be in disagreement because, well, for, for instance, um, I had the good fortune of in high school, uh, a friend bought an extra ticket to the Zelda Symphony. And um, listening to a CD of that um, nowadays, I, you know, I, I don't think it was all that. I think a lot of the arrangements uh, do a disservice to the music. But the the fact of the matter is that I think that as a child, especially with the earlier Zelda games like Ocarina, Twilight Princess, and Majora's Mask, um, I think that there's something very deep and profound in those games, especially in Majora's Mask, the character, the, uh, the wonder, the beautiful world that was built, and um, the sorrow that comes with it. And when I was sitting there in the auditorium, all I wanted to do is close my eyes and go off into this magical world that was being built. And when I opened my eyes, they were showing uh, a projection of people playing the video games. And it destroyed the deeper meaning and it destroyed the engagement. And I know part of it is that, um, I know part of that is that like just showing footage of people playing a video game can never capture the depth of a, a child's imagination engaging with this material and that's what i wanted to be part of so so it's not it, it wasn't the greatest projection in the world but it got me thinking that um there is something to simply concentrating on one art form in its purest form again these are like, I mean, very foundational concepts that I thoroughly agree with. There needs to be a state where everyone can isolate these ideas and be able to view a film for just its imagery and also view music for just your imagination because they are very separate things. It's just if you're seeking ideal experience... There's so many aspects of experience that you could put into different mediums that the more you can utilize, I'll see the better it is. That's why, I mean, film is one of the, my preferred things. 
it's engaging sight, you can also engage sound. Music, it's harder to engage sight, which is, I mean, it's why people go to live shows, is to watch the person play the music. I mean, I'm not even getting into, like, scent. Yeah, I would love if places, like, started incorporating that into the whole energy. But that's why uh, EDM festivals are so profound. I mean, actually, any live show, not just saying EDM. You get the feel, like, the physical energy of the uh, speakers hitting your body. And so then you have feel, you have sound, and if you add visuals on top of that live show, you have sight. So you're already touching three different like main senses that humans go off of. All you need left is smell, and you have basically a human's whole grasp of comprehension. Let's not forget that sound affects proprioception. The sound waves go through, wiggle the fluids in your ears. I do thoroughly like understanding each of these as isolated things. As a study of the art form as the final product though i like to get as i mean i personally feel as many different things as you can put in there the better unless you're going for a very specific like direction if like you say this is like why i'm doing this then yeah that's totally fine but if like you're like striving for peak human experience as many different like feelings as you can get in there is my favorite thing just having knots one sort of sensory cue is a valid way to do it and that's that's sort of why classical music nowadays you're supposed to go sit still not do anything Um, it's controlling for other senses whereas if you go to a rock show you're gonna you're gonna smell sweat you're gonna bump into people you're gonna see a light show yeah and those are things that the band doesn't necessarily have control of and so it's not like that's part of the intentional experience it's it feels like an accident but it is part of how you remember it especially because smell is connected with memory in a very close way i think the main idea is artists need to take control of their environment i think that's absolutely true especially in this day and age when just about everything's pulling you away from what matters and music's distributed online you can listen in any situation on any speaker who knows if you're seeing the album art or even the song title Most people don't know, but I think I want to just interject to make my position clear. I don't know that art is such a physical thing. I don't know that, like, okay, we have uh, five primary senses. I don't know that stimulating all of them leads to the deepest art. I just don't think it's all physical. I think that deep truths come out physically. I think that something doesn't need to be overstimulating to be profound. I think that a lot of the... The deepest truths, the deepest art is sort of quiet in a way. I think that there's, especially in our culture, an obsession with creating artwork that demands attention. Um, Then I think there will always be two fundamental groups of people engaging with art. I think that there will be people who listen and people who don't, and there's art for both. I think historically there have been more people who are interested in listening than not. I think we're living in a time where most people don't want to listen to art. Whereas back in the day, you know, your favorite piece of music you might only hear once or twice in your life. And so it was something that you'd pay a great deal of attention to. If you were slaving away um, in a field as a surf uh, working for a master and you have a day off and there's a group coming into town to play music, that's something that you'd pay a great deal of attention to, I'm sure or engage with very deeply. I think we live in a time where it's, um, the pull is how can we distract you? How can we force your attention? And I think that culturally that has a lot of uh, ramifications. I think one of them is that people associate like uh, respect and power too much. It's, if something can force me to do something, then I'm more likely to respect it. And something that's more quiet, that requires that, um, I initiate and put effort into it. People tend to respect that less. But I think that there's definitely something to quieter art. And I personally believe that quieter art tends to be in a deeper territory. And what I mean by quieter is I'm not even referring to volume. I'm just referring to something that demands your attention. Because I I think what you're talking about with EDM, to me, that, that feels like a cheap trick that you can just turn up the volume and turn up the bass enough to where it causes a physical sensation. I don't feel like that necessarily comes from a deeper place because I think 
we have all this knowledge on psychology, we have all this knowledge on physiology that anyone can use it to create a physical or psychological effect. The question is, is that a deep and profound thing that's worth pursuing? And that just depends on the, the, the piece of artwork itself as an individual statement. I mean, every artist has had a gimmick. Rigging a, um, building an entire stage so that an upright bass can resonate through the stage. Building a, um, cathedral so that you can resonate through it. Building a, um, an amphitheater where it projects. All these are the exact same gimmicks as EDM festivals. It's just the technology of the current times. I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Do, do you know how much goes into these EDM festivals? It is exquisite amounts of technology and like thought and calculations it is insane oh i'm sure i'm sure but i'm i'm saying that i don't well first i don't agree that these are gimmicks i think if you're having a place where you want to draw attention to sound and want to draw attention to what is being produced i think that that's just incredible design yeah like an edm festival my stance on gimmicks is that they're completely neutral it's not good or bad it's just like um it's a question of substance and what I mean by substance very specifically is um, stuff that has substance is made with blood, a person's putting their soul into it, or multiple people. And it's something that has infinite depth, like everything in nature. You can't outgrow it, it grows with you. And I think that artwork that cannot be outgrown, that you can keep coming back to and it will give you insight, I think, I think has substance. Now that being said, with what you're talking about, um, with these designs, I, I don't know that those are gimmicks. I just think that that's, that's that's just really smart because some of the most interesting frequencies are the subtlest, they're the hardest to hear, and um, natural acoustics are just uh, it's 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 so sublime. So to make it a little bit louder so the average person can hear, I think think that's great. And there's nothing deeper and bloodier than the inside of your body, and that's what all these music technologies are designed to get to is project sound into you. So at the end of the day, all that matters is how it affects the person, not what has to be done to affect the person. Because back in the day, that type technology that was used, again, amphitheaters, running an entire organ through a cathedral, that was magic. It still is. It still is, but so is like the tech used at festivals. Like It's the same thing to me just done in different ways. Now, the longevity of a certain art piece is something I would agree in engaging in of, yeah, how long can a certain EDM piece go with somebody? But that's why I personally identify EDM music as tribal music. It is not meant to be held for a long time. It is meant to unite a group of people in a moment and make them all feel something powerful and godly. And like EDM is like the equivalent of having an organ in a church cathedral. It makes you feel this almighty. I haven't actually been to an EDM festival, but for my. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not too like hard set. But it's this like almighty power that can flow through a massive group of people and make them feel something like physical, visceral, it causes an experience that can be like life-changing to a person. And as long as that happens, I find it a valuable thing. <laughs>